still don't understand the relationships between that, that was between the three countries because things changed so rapidly. Um, and especially when you work in, in Bosnia as well, um, with, with Serbs, Croats, Bosnians, um, it, it's very difficult for somebody from outside to, to understand. And, and I don't believe anybody that came and said, oh, I know what happened, um, because we don't. Što se točno događalo u petak 27. lipnja u 14 sati i 55 minuta na mostu preko Dunava nedaleko Erduta, pouzdano znaju tek akteri samog uhičenja Slavka Dokmanovića. Operation Little Flower is about the mass grave in Ovčara that was discovered. Investigations led us to understand that Slavko Dokmanović, the former mayor of uh, Vukovar, was involved. Predsjednika i podpredsjednika Skupštine Vukovar, a u cilju prevazilaženja nastale teške situacije, dogovoreno je sljedeće. You know, Dokmanović was, um, um, he was the mayor, he was a celebrity uh, in Vukovar and the surrounding area. He was big into football. And during the time that the victims were held um, in, in, a far, in the farm at Ofchara, um, he was going around and laughing and joking and kicking people in the head as if it were a football. So, um, yes, we, we, have, we have five survivors from Ofchara and every one of them said exactly the same, um, that he was very much involved and he didn't care. He didn't care what was going to happen to these people. I saw that there was a leader of our children to the president of the city, who was caught in the face of a young man and a young man, who didn't know his name and his name. A znam ovog drugog gdje je iz Volejaga zakvačio Dadu Đukića koji je bio ranit u, u noge pa je čučio. Kako ga je udario, cijela hala je zvonila kako je taj dečko udario glavom u zic. Osim mene ima još tri svedoka koji su to vidjeli. We had five or six different plans of how we were going to get Slavko Gotmanovic into Croatia uh, over the Bogieva Bridge um, because uh, General Klein was based strangely at, um, in Erdu where Arkans camp used to be. Though, um, as I toured Vukovar for the second time and He's saw the, the destruction... We found out and we thought this is a good opportunity for me to pretend to be talking to him about the things that the crowds had done to the Serbs. With me, he was very friendly. He was interested in me having information or getting evidence against the Croats. Um, and so that's why he welcomed me into his, into his home. Bearing in mind that I, at that point, knew what he'd done. Um, but my first impression of him was that he just wanted to blame um, the Croats for everything that happened and the reason that he's now living in Sambor in, in rented accommodation and the fact that he and his daughter have both got houses in, um, in the Vukvare at Turpinje um, and there's nothing they could do with them. Uh, so he felt that he was, he was the one that had been betrayed that he deserved more than that. And I said, well, what are you going to do about your house and your daughter's house in, in Turpinje? Um, he said, I don't know. I said, well, you were the mayor of Vukovar. You met with General Klein every day. Have you tried approaching him? Um, and he said, no, no, he, he won't talk to me. I said, well, I can approach him when I go back and ask him if he's prepared to talk to you about, um, uh, about 
your property. And I said, you know, you used to be the mayor. Um, maybe you should ask him about all the Serbs' properties there. And then suddenly he became mayor again. You know, it was important. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. He didn't suspect anything. Even when he got in the car to go and see Klein, he didn't expect anything. It was only when he got into Erdut and then armed forces took him and his friend out of the car. That's the first time he, he knew um, that he'd done the wrong thing. When it was arranged that he would come and see Klein, then uh, it was arranged that, that um, the Grom would pick him up from the, just on the, in no man's land, just on the Bogieva Bridge. Um, and bring him securely to, um, to Klein. He was read his rights, he was told that um, uh, he's going to be taken to The Hague. You are charged in an indictment and named in an arrest warrant issued by the tribunal. You are charged with the great breaches of the Geneva Conventions, crimes against humanity and violations of the laws or customs of war for your role in the beatings and killings which occurred at Ovchara Farm near Vukovar on the 20th of November 1991. Do you understand? Optuženi ste za teške povrede ženevske konvencije, zločine protiv čovječnosti, kršenje ratnih zakona i vratnih običaja do vaše uloge u tučenju i ubijanju na farmi od Čara u zemi Vukovara 20. oktobra 1991. godine. Da li ste razumeli ovo što vam je rečeno? Razumeo sam, ali to nije isto. I understand, but it's not true. Good transport, yes. Yeah, good transport. When I reached in his bag, there was a loaded gun, handgun, um, which, when you think, he had that gun. I, we don't know how he got through the x-ray. I just put it on the x-ray and went through. Um, but the, when you think about it, had he had his bag, he would have been the only person on the flight with a gun, um, and who knows what would have happened then. Uh, and. But before that, he'd taken a gun to meet Klein. He thought he was going to meet Jacques Klein. Jedan od organizatora srpske pobune u Hrvatskoj, Slavko Dokmanović, optužen za zločin nad zarobljenim hrvatskim braniteljima, uhićen je pod nadzorom Untajesa i već se nalazi u Hagu gdje će mu biti suđeno pred Međunarodnim sudom. Nakon što su ga u Hrvatskom podunavlju uhitile snage Untajesa, prebačen je u Hag gdje mu je danas i pročitana optužnica. U njoj se navodi kako je Dokmanović zajedno s Mrkšićem, Šljivančaninom i Radićem naredio, a potom i sudjelovao u mučenju i pokolju hrvatskih ranjenika na Ovčari. Nisam kriv. I felt very bad for the survivors, for the victims um, uh, and the survivors of the victims because no closure. Um, and, you know, he didn't want to be the first, the first Serb to be indicted, uh, to be uh, convicted. So, um, I, I think it was a coward's way out. He, you can see, he looked shocked. He never thought that it would happen. So he looked shocked. I told him who I was. I told him that I was going to read the indictment to him. And uh, he refused to speak English. So I 
fortunately he was my interpreter um, and he, he said well through the interpreter where are we going? I said we're going to the Hague and I said but first I'm going to read your rights and, and second I'm going to search you he said well, I've just come from the prison why do you need to search me? I said because you're my prisoner now so I'm going to search you before we get on any flight so I had the security guy search him and he hated that Milosevic hated that because he was searching inside his mouth in his clothes and everything we got in this very big helicopter um, and immediately he started speaking English he was speaking English perfectly and then he said um, uh, I, I, I want to smoke and I said well you can't smoke on the helicopter and he pointed down at an ashtray on the floor and he said and I own the helicopter anyway so that wasn't I, you know, I knew he didn't own the helicopter not anymore anyway first of all he was looking out of the window and you could feel he was thinking this is the last time I'm ever going to see this the country um, and he said where are we going I said we're going to Tuzla Tuzla and he gave a strange face as if Tuzla was dirty as he got off the the uh, helicopter he pulled his handkerchief out of his pocket and rubbed cleanly shoes as if to say this is you know I'm in Bosnia this is dirty I don't want this on my shoes he started walking up and down the inside of the hangar and the poor guy with the video was following him up and down and uh, and he said you know that has a zoom lens you can stand there and anywhere I go you can follow me he was trying to belittle this guy and then he wanted to use the toilet which there's a toilet inside this place and they said only if we leave the door open and your video recorded which he hated but that's what happened then we flew to Holland um, and he was taken to prison and uh, the following day um, Carla Del Ponte who was the prosecutor then brought him in from the prison into her office uh, I don't know what happened because she was alone with him um, and then afterwards she said nobody's going to talk to him so the plan of me interviewing him didn't happen it's a shame because potentially he had so much information that we had to get from other places but if we could have had him open up it would have helped in many in many ways and I'm sure that the if he had opened up that all these trials would have been over a lot quicker two things about Boko Haram the first thing is what a beautiful city destroyed absolutely it was um, disgusting to see what had happened to such a beautiful place. Um, the other thing I found is when I was interviewing people that were on, um, that were either in Arkhanovsky or, or wanted to be, is that they were all, or mainly, uneducated people that, the sort of people that would be bullies, you know, they suddenly got power and they were allowed to do um, whatever they wanted to do because the, uh, Arkan didn't really have a lot of control over his man he just said go and do this and they did it I went to interview somebody in I think it was Odut and his mother answered the door he's not here but I could see through the window that he was there and we started saying and then he sort of ran off out the back I mean we, we got him two days later but um, uh, he was just stupid he, he wasn't very bright at all um, but he was in power when the war was going on because it's it's about um, the survival of the strongest during the war um, not the brightest and the tribunal was only formed to prosecute the leaders you know we there were so many 
people that, that should be, still should be indicted. But we didn't have the resources or the mandate to do that at the low level. Um, we only did the leaders. But it's down to the Croatian government, the Serbian government, and the Bosnian government to prosecute these people. We know that's a difficult thing. It's difficult after so many years um, to, which is what, 27 years? Um, to, to get evidence, you know, hard evidence. But the only way to do it is to interview people, is to go and speak to people. And the, the, you can get prosecutions after so long um, by talking to people, if it's done by professional investigators. And I know that every, every government has different priorities. And, you know, is something that happened 27 years ago something that they should spend their time on um, when there are lots of things happening now? But I don't know, I can't answer that. Um, but I understand when they say it, but it's not an excuse. Time is not an excuse.